Welcome to part 6. Now it seems to me that this welcome page is really in desperate need of some love. So what we are going to do now is actually to implement it properly. And the way we do this is to now create a new file. We're going to call it home page.dart. And like we like we've done before with some of the previous components, we're going to define it uh, as a widget. So we're going to import material as usual. And this time let's try to make this uh, a stateless widget. So because this is a stateless widget, uh, we need to implement the build method as usual. And here we're going to put our new scaffold. This time we're going to give it an up bar as a new up bar. And this is going to have a, a title, which is going to be a new text saying welcome. And we are also going to specify a body, which is a new container. And this time we want to make things uh, look a little bit nicer than last time. So our child is now going to be a new center, which is what we're going to use to make uh, a text. Sorry, new text uh, widget, which will also say welcome. We're going to make this big so the user can see this properly. And we're going to do this with a new text style with a font uh, size, for example, of 32 points. And, and this is something that looks a lot better. Before we try this on the simulator, I want to also do a couple of extra things. So in the same way that we added uh, the authentication uh, object to our root and login um, widgets, I also wanted to add it here. So I'm going to say that this has a final base out, out object, which I'm also going to import. And the other thing that I want to do is to provide a, a callback like I did for the login page. So I'm going to say that I have a void callback and this is going to be called unsigned out. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm able to pass in these parameters uh, when I initialize a home page uh, object. So this is how I can do this. And then there is one last thing that I want to do on this page. And in particular, I want to define a method which will be called sign out, which will be an asynchronous method. And what I want to do in here is to call into my authentication um, object in order to log out or sign out the user. So here inside this try catch block we need to add some code and at the moment the authentication uh, class does not yet have uh, a method defined for sending out the user so i think we need to do to do this as well so we're going to define this method as a future uh, this time we'll type void because really signing out does not really return any users we're going to call this an asynchronous method as well. And what we are going to do in here is to say firebase of the instance dot sign out. And that's all we're gonna do. In fact, we just can return this directly. Now that's a little bit better. We can also expose this method to the base out uh, um, interface. And uh, just one last thing I want to do, just, just to make things look, look things a bit nicer. So I have this Firebase all.instance duplicated four times in four different methods. So I think it's a bit tidier if I just move it out. So I can say Firebase out, Firebase out, which is going to be equal to Firebase all.instance. 
and this way I can just replace uh, all the calls in here with this uh, method that I created. So I think it just lo looks a little bit more uh, tidy and I don't repeat things uh, too much. Okay, I think we are ready with this old implementation and we can now sign out users from within the home page. So let's do that. Here we are now going to say await uh, for um, out dot sign out. And once this is completed, we can call our on sign out uh, method. And here for now, we just print any errors if we encounter any. Now we need a, a logout button somewhere uh, in this in this page, and the place where we could do it is uh, actually within the app bar. I think it's a good place to do it. So we, if we add an actions uh, here, this is basically a way of specifying an, any number of, of widgets to the right side of, of the app bar as kind of tooltip actions that that we can uh, define. So I'm just going to add here a new flat button. And uh, I'm going to say that this uh, flat button as a child, which is a new text uh, with a text uh, log out, for example, uh, I'm going to give it a style, uh, which is going to be a new text style uh, with a font size of, uh, for example, 17. And uh, I'm also going to give it a color uh, of colors, the white. And the other thing that I'm going to do is to say that uh, when this is pressed, I think I'm missing a bracket here, let me fix that. So when this is pressed, I'm going to call my sign out method that I defined above. Okay, I think this is looking promising. And we are now ready to hook up this brand new home page inside our root page. So let's do that. Uh, we're gonna clear this scaffold place that we've previously added and we're going to add our new home page. Uh, we must not forget to uh, import it, obviously. So I'm gonna do that in a second. Page.dart here. And now we should be able to just go here and say that this takes a node parameter, which is going to be widget dot out and it also takes an on sign out method uh, which we're going to call uh, sign out uh, we have not defined this method yet so we could say here quickly sign out and in the same way that we set the state here to be uh, old status dot signed in this time we can say old status dot not signed in uh, so I think we have everything we need in place now to uh, see all the transitions uh, that we initially defined here uh, working correctly in our app. Uh, so we can also uncomment uh, this line that previously I set here and we should be able to see the app running correctly. So if we hot reload and head over to our simulator we can see our new welcome screen that is uh, now visible here. And as well, we can tap on the logout button that we just implemented and we are taken back to the login screen. Uh, just to complete the cycle, if I were to enter my email and password again and log in, I'm then taken back to the welcome screen. So. This proves that all the links are in place between our different widgets and that uh, things are working as expected. And one thing that I mentioned earlier is that um, the authorization status is also persisted when we close the application and open it again because we have implemented this init state method. So if I wanted to just quickly test that, I could, for example, stop the simulator and if I then start it again, I can see that it takes me straight into the welcome screen because currently uh, there is a current user. So this works as well. Congratulations for making it this far. In this video, we have introduced a lot of 
concepts that I think can be very useful as you start building your Flutter apps and you scale them up. Uh, in particular, we have started to see how uh, we can move away from very simple applications with just a couple of widgets into something that is more complex. In fact, I've shown you how we can use state uh, in order to manipulate what widgets are actually being rendered at runtime. And as we are starting to see now in Flutter, everything is a widget. So at the beginning of this video series, I was showing you how you can, for example, create uh, different widgets from within the same class uh, to render, uh, for example, uh, different login and registration buttons depending on the state. Uh, but that was still being done from within the same page. And in this most recent video, I've shown you how to actually step out of the um, of a single file and going into kind of bigger widgets that can handle more complex uh, user flows. Uh, but the, the basic concepts are the same. You can just use state to manipulate which widgets get rendered. And I think this is something that is really powerful in Flutter. Another thing that I would like to point out are the advantages that come when you start thinking about your widgets in terms of reusable pieces of code. So initially we just had a login page and we encoded quite a bit of logic in it to sign in or, or sign up a user. And that's something that it's worth reusing in case you need it in the future. So we have taken the login page and we have made it into something reusable by adding this callback on signed in. Now the login page is quite complex, but in terms of how you actually use it, it is pretty simple. So from within this root page, you can just create a login page. You can specify an authentication um, provider, which in this case is Firebase, but because we made it abstract, we could swap it out for something else. And this login page will then provide a signed in callback. So it really becomes sort of a plug and play component that you can uh, reuse in different ways. Okay, so we have made it to the end of this login demo. I hope that you have enjoyed following this material as much as I had creating it. So you can subscribe to my channel and I'll see you on the next videos.